Hello there, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Chit Chat, and welcome back to another Planet Coaster episode of the Studio Theme Park. Now, I know it's been quite a while since we've done an episode on this park, but I just need you, I need you to stick with me for a second and sit down because this is gonna be crazy. It's unprecedented. It is going to be the most magnificent thing I have ever built inside a Planet Coaster to date. Are you ready? Are you sitting down? We are building on today's episode. A parking lot. I know. I know. Crazy. Insane, in fact. Why? Who? Who could ever? Wh 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 for what reason? Well, I'll tell you what. It's because I want to make this park a little bit more realistic than the Super Mario Park, even though I don't really tend to go for realism. I still think it'd be a fun opportunity to add something to the park that would make it a bit more believable. So I wanted to take the time to build a parking lot. But it's not going to just gonna be a generic parking lot. We're going to be doing um, a tram that kind of takes you from one end of the lot to the other. And the goal is to continue to expand the, the lot as time goes on, depending on how much trouble Planet Coaster is giving me when we start adding more and more to this park. If I'm getting playback issues, I won't, you know, add more resources to a parking lot or a parking garage. But the goal is to, if everything is running smoothly, to continue to add more to this lot to make it a little bit more believable. But for now, we'll start with just a small lot. And eventually I want to add, when we start bringing in characters into this park, adding banners, kind of like the whole Disney style, where it's just like, oh, we're in Mickey lot, or oh, we're in Heimlich lot. That's unfortunate. Actually, I'm joking. I love Heimlich. <laughs> oh, I'm a beautiful butterfly. Sorry, I had to do it. Oh my gosh. That reminds me, I have like, <laughs> before they closed the Bugs, uh, Bugs Land in California Adventure, Allie and I rode on the Heimlich ride. And we were laughing so hard we were in tears on just how ridiculous that ride is. And just like, it, you're just sitting in a Heimlich coaster that's going like two miles an hour and you're just listening to Heimlich be like, Oh, candy corn, my favorites. <laughs> oh God, that ride is ridiculous. I'm not sad to see that area go. The only thing I'm sad about is that it's tough to be a bug. That that show is actually pretty cool. That hopper animatronic that drops down is legit. He was really cool. But yeah, like I said, I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world, especially coming back after such a long hiatus on this particular build project. I think it's been like two weeks or maybe it's been a month by now. Oh, I'm sorry. But I, it's just something I want to do. And once we're done with it, it'll be awesome. So stick with me. I promise that the next episode will be something a bit more extravagant, a little bit more exciting. I definitely don't want to jump back into the the coaster, the taxi coaster. I feel that we're pretty much done with that one. The only thing that I want to add to it is, again, we did have a contest entry, which I do apologize that those haven't been added to the park yet, but we did have a contest entry winner that is in relation to the taxi coaster. So we will be adding that in the future. And of course, the other two uh, contest winners. So with that being said, the next episode is going to probably start working on the next area of the park, which will be our first major themed area. And that is likely going to be Angel Grove. So we'll start working on the Power Ranger area of the park, which I have been looking forward to. Still trying to decide exactly what kind of experience I want to make for the Power Ranger ride, whether it's going to be like a themed dark ride or if we should just do like I was also thinking like two dueling coasters would be kind of cool. One is the Dragon Zord, the other one's like the Mega Zord. Like the Dragon Zord can be more focused on like water because the Dragon Zord is, you know, he comes up from the ocean. And then the Mega Zord can, you know, go through more like rocky terrain. Like when you see the morphing sequence of the Mega Zord, it's always like they always find like a random desert out in the middle of nowhere to do their transformation sequence. <laughs> it's like the Mega Zord is nice and considerate. They go and form the, the they, they form all their Zords in the middle of the desert. The Dragon Zord literally crushes a small fishing village every time Tommy summons it. Tommy's kind of a butthead, isn't he? <laughs> Even when he's like a good, you know, he's the good Power Ranger, uh, he's still like, <laughs> ah, my, my fishing shack again, every week, it's the same thing. You would think, depending on where he is, it would summon somewhere else, but nope, always the same spot right here. And Dragon Ball Z has like the, a similar thing. It's just like, oh, we shouldn't fight in the city. Let's go fight in that vast, 
ravine over there that just stretches for thousands of miles that wouldn't actually exist anywhere near normal population in cities. Um, what are we talking about? Oh yeah, Planet Coaster. God, that was a trail. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, wait, what do you expect? We're building. <laughs> we're building a. Uh, uh, parking garage, a parking lot. Wow, I am uh, a little out of it, not gonna lie. I tell you what though, I really stinking enjoy the tram that they built for this. I mean, that thing is just fantastic looking. I haven't used it yet in any park that I've built. So as soon as I dropped that down, I was just like, oh, they modeled it so well. I mean, legit looks just like the tram from Universal Studios. And I would love to add an actual tram tour to this park. I have no idea what kind of themed experiences we would have with it. But I don't know. I think it would be an absolute blast to make something. Uh, it would be really stinking cool if it had more elements that the, the tram at Universal Studios had. Like, for example, when it goes into the Jaws area, you go on that bridge and the bridge kind of rocks back and forth. You know, it'd be really cool if we had that kind of experience. And someone was, uh, I think someone put a comment down on one of my previous videos. It was on one of the Mario episodes, but they were saying something about like doing kind of like a simulator ride, utilizing the screens and animation. And boy, man, I would love to do that if I had more time to dedicate to animation, but it would be so stinking cool to do something like that with either like the tram. And I only bring up the tram because you all know Universal Studios love them screens. And the only reason why I would use screens in Planet Coaster is because that's one of the easiest ways to incorporate custom content into Planet Coaster without just straight up going into 3D modeling. But we would be able to do something similar because we could do kind of like that quote unquote projection mapping. And uh, look at, okay, I actually really like how that sign turned out. I think it's absolutely adorable. <laughs> like, come and see the sights of the wonderful parking lot. On your left, you'll see a Mercedes. Very nice, very nice. Someone brings home a handsome paycheck. And on your right, you'll see a minivan. Seats up to six. Very nice. And, oh, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that, that particular tree. That particular tree attracts mosquitoes, and I don't like it. So we're going to move on. We're moving on. You know, it's actually, um, it was a dream of mine. If I were to ever work at a theme park it would be an absolute blast to either be on the tram tour or the Jaws ride when it was still around in Florida and be a skipper. That would have been amazing. Or a skipper on the Jungle Cruise. I would love to do that. That would be so much fun. I know they have to like kind of stick to a script, but I'm wondering if you can throw a little bit of improv in there. Because if I could throw in a little bit of improv, you know, at least keep things a little entertaining and not have to go through the same like you know script every single time uh, I remember being a little kid and I was obsessed I mean I'm still obsessed with Indiana Jones because it's a freaking awesome trilogy I say tr I say trilogy and I mean it <laughs> it's an awesome trilogy um, but I had like an Indiana Jones hat and a jacket and everything when I was a little kid and uh, I was getting razzed by our skipper on that particular jungle cruise, but you know, it's fine. I was Indiana Jones. You don't mess with Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones will will raid your tomb. If you ever have one, I'll raid your tomb and I'll put it, I'll put whatever I find in a museum. And I'll show him. I'll show that skipper who's who's what. <laughs> um but yeah, like I said, this is a really small parking lot, so you're probably looking at it and be like, why the heck would you need a tram? I've seen targets with longer parking lots than that. Like I said, eventually this will be extended and it'll be a much larger lot. This is just for now, it's a little bit of a smaller lot because I am worried about dedicating too many resources to something that's just kind of there for more visual flair to make this park look a little bit more believable because... I would say my Mario Park's a bit more based off of just the general aesthetics of Disney, and this one's definitely based off the more aesthetics of Universal, just the nature of the beast, I guess. But, um, like I said, I do want to add like an actual garage, but I don't want to apply too many resources just in case my uh, computer or Planet Coaster starts to bug out a little bit. Another thing that I would like to add, which uh, after we're done building all of the contest winners, is uh, I think it would be really fun to collaborate on a kind of a city walk, 
you know, like Downtown Disney or a City Walk for Universal Studios. I think it would be really fun to have something similar to that for this park on the opposite side. So the parking garage is on the left and we could have a City Walk over to the right and that would be home to just like, you know, just like restaurants and shops and they don't necessarily have to be themed after anything in particular. In fact, I think it would be really fun to have it just be open, you know, you can kind of theme it to whatever you want and you could, it could be a restaurant, it could be a shop, it could be like a, like a walkthrough experience, um, like an arcade. There's all sorts of stuff you could make for it. It'd be fun. Um, there's a, a, a VR experience over in downtown Disney, which is the void and it's, uh, they got the Star Wars thing going on right now. I wasn't able to do it because after you walk out of Disneyland, like we did, we were just like, oh crap, I don't have 30 more dollars to spend. I think it was 30 a person to be like, I don't have $60 to spend right now. I just walked out of Disneyland. I just spent $60 on a churro, a single churro. No, it was more like mint juleps because those things are amazing. But, um, I, my buddy, uh, my buddy Aaron was telling me all about it, and I was like, "Dang, man, I want to go back just for that." It sounded so fun. But that was in uh, downtown Disney, so there's all sorts of really cool experiences. But he was telling me all about it, and like, it's insane how far we've come with video games and just technology in general. With the, you saying with the VR thing, like if there was a representation of a physical object within the VR experience, there was an actual physical object in the real world that represented it. So like. He needed to find a blaster because they were being attacked by stormtroopers. And he, he literally picked up a physical object off the wall. But in the game, it was an Imperial blaster rifle. I'm like, how stinking cool is that? The only real crazy experience I've had with VR beyond just, you know, like the consumer stuff is when I was at Adobe Max, which is the Adobe conference. Uh, Adobe, of course, being the platform that I edit and animate on. Adobe, you know, After Effects Premiere animate all that stuff uh it's just a conference for everything and anything adobe and adobe themselves put it on it's a really cool experience if anybody's into animation or video editing or wants to learn more it's a really cool uh way to f learn from the industry professionals and even the people that make the dang programs it's amazing it's a really cool opportunity but um they had a vr experience there and I went through it with my good friend Caitlin, and it was very, very cool. It was before any of like this void stuff was even around, so this was pretty early bird stuff, but they had physical objects that were represented in the virtual world. So when you were in the headset, you felt as though you were walking over a rickety bridge over like the Himalayas. And in the real world, they had like these little plates on the ground that made you feel like you were stepping on a rickety bridge and then at some point you are handed like this um like this magician's wand thing and someone actually hands you a physical object and then you're able to start like painting in the sky and stuff like that and then eventually you end up on top of a building in the virtual world and i went to go lean over the side because i just like oh that's really cool it's a cool cityscape and i grabbed onto a bar in the virtual world which was kind of just like a guide rail and there was a bar in the real world I'm like gosh darn this whole like simulation is absolutely amazing i always think of like how cool would it be to do an escape room like that where you know that you could just skin the escape room to whatever it is you wanted so oh, maybe maybe that would be a fun thing to add to the city walk i mean of course you wouldn't be able to make the experience but just being able to you know make it look like it's there maybe have like the vr headsets maybe in 3d model them i don't know there's all sorts of crazy cool stuff you could do with planet coaster and i'm just spitballing because we're building a parking lot after all don't have a whole lot to say in terms of the builds process <laughs> but like i said we'll start working on more fun stuff in the coming episodes i just kind of wanted to do a little quick easy project to ease back into the studios park because like i said i know it's been quite a while since i have worked on it and uh, Angel Grove will be the next major area we work on. If any of y'all have suggestions for that, if anyone's a Power Ranger fan, sound off in the comments below with what you would like to see for that area. And uh, as we kind of cut to a more finished version of the lot, you see that we have populated it with cars. We have the fencing all set up and we'll be ready for an expansion as long as Planet Coaster plays nice. So thank you all so much for watching. I genuinely appreciate it. And as always, I'll chat with you on the next episode.